Hi, this is Jeff Fassbinder. We're doing the second part of the frame assembly uh, where we'll be joining the two frames together and making sure it's 90. But uh, what are we going to, what we're going to do before uh, we get started is I'm going to actually put in the elevator servo into the frame uh, in order to make it easier for us to uh, work on the helicopter. And that way if you don't happen to have a long uh, hex wrench, you can easily get to that servo. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, I have the servo, pulled out one of the DS510 Metal Gear servos. And I also have the um, screw and the lock washer that comes with your ser servo horns. And the uh, blue aluminum horn here. So that's there. We're going to put that there. And I also have the bag uh, open, the 500HZ13. Okay, and we're going to be use, utilizing these uh, soft tapping screws. They're hex. They're uh, two point uh, six, and they're ten millimeters long for the frames. What's also included with your uh, servos is grommets. Grommets with the uh, gold inner pieces here. Put these screws out of the way here. We don't need those. And what you want to do? In this case, is just pop in these little grommets here. They uh, help dampen some of the vibration uh, that is exhibited in the frames or inside your uh, helicopter from the motor and so forth. And uh, we'll get these here. Let me see. If I get something to pop these on here. Actually, let me just get a screw. Here we go. I have, oh, actually, I got a better one here. There's a three. Oh, so we'll use the two. We'll just get this. We're just going to use this to push this in. You can push them in by hand very easily. But uh, again, if you have uh, large hands, it might be hard to hold on to. So you just get that, push it right in there. Makes it nice and easy there. Okay, pop that in there. Pop that on. And last one here. We'll pop that in. Okay. Put that back. We don't need that bag anymore. So now we have our servo with our grommets and the bushings in place. Uh, this is the left hand side of the frame. We've already built that. And now we're going to get the right hand side of the frame. We're going to insert the servo. This is the elevator servo. The uh, lead, wire lead, does face to the uh, back of the helicopter or aft. So you just get that wire through there, you're going to put that through the frames. And uh, what's nice about utilizing the grommets with those bushings is it uh, locks basically the servo in uh, more securely to the hole positions that are set in the frame set. So we'll just go ahead and put these screws in here, get those, there's four of them here. I'm going to use our other frame just to do this here, so base to work on, and then we'll start those. Just snug them up. You have the again those uh, grommets there to help with the vibration and so forth, and also act as a centering aid for the screws. Just snug, just just get them snugged up there. It's good enough, and. Uh, Should be good. Okay, so we have that servos in place, and uh, we're ready to basically join the two frames together. Now you could do this after the frame is just totally assembled, but uh, I just wanted to do that just to make it easier for us. In addition, we have this servo horn, and uh, on the manual it does call out for the. Uh, I, I want to say it's the outer hole, but. Uh, Yes, it is the outer hole. Just wanted to reconfirm that. And it does include the balls in here. And in this case, we'll be using a, a short ball on the tail. Let me see here. Let me double check here what we have. Okay, we got two balls. We have the short and the long. The, the shorts, I believe, are... OK, 
Okay. Yeah. The short is the one you're going to want to use. The orientation of the actual arm. It's going to be here. Let's put that on there. Elevator segment here. I have my washer and lock washer. I should say lock washer and screw here. Also want to go ahead and get the small ball. Uh, and it's going to go in the outer hole on this blue control horn. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite there, just, just a little bit back there. And the actual screw that's going to go into the servo right now, we're not going to do this any Loctite because we're going to want to be able to center that up once we have the uh, helicopter assembled and all the radio gear working. But for now, what we'll do is we'll put the horn on the servo here. Get it on there just a little bit. Use this and we'll push this on here. Okay. Pop this on. That screw out of the way there. And we'll just push that in. Make sure you line up the splines. Okay. Once we have that on there, we'll go ahead and Get our Phillips screwdriver. Okay, that on. Okay, so we have that on there. So that horn's in place. And, uh, if we need to take this off later on for centering, we can do that, and uh, that's why I haven't used Loctite. You got a lock washer there as well. All right, so let's go ahead, get this. We're gonna put this together, and go ahead and get started with this. Get the lower frame lined up. Okay, and we're gonna do the lower frame first. And I'll tell you why in just a second here. Okay, now we have our, again, we have our servo in place. The reason why I wanted the lower frame um, exposed, or should I say only bolt the lower frame there, was so that we could put these inserts in. On the top, it just locks in place like that, and so we want the top of the frame to be loose. On the bottom, it actually slides in, and there's the screws, those self-tapping screws, we'll use that to lock that in place. Right now, we wanna leave that loose. This one, we'll just lock that in place there. Um, on the top here, again with that servo in place now, we can get the, the washout or the phase. Phase right here, we'll put that in place. Top's loose, so that's why things are popping out. I don't have the top bearing blocks tight just yet, but I will very shortly. Okay, so let me show you this. All right, so that's in place in that nice aluminum piece. That's stock. All right, so let's go ahead and get the frame. We'll get that top bearing going here now. I'll start getting those in place.
Now we'll install screws for the motor mount here. Three by six. Put those in place. Before I get too far, we'll check it out real quick, make sure that uh, the frame looks square before we get any further here. I'll check that right now. So, sure. Looks good. Sure thing. Okay. So that looks good. It's all nice and squared up there. Okay, and then this piece pops right in there, like so. Okay, and that is the essence of the frame. Next, what we'll do is we'll get started with our landing gear, and we'll get that installed here. Um, and uh, I'll show you this. You'll notice that when I did assemble this, I utilized two screws on the front here and on the back. Those screws will actually be utilized uh, by, from the landing gear itself. So the landing gear will do that. I just wanted to show you the makeup so we can actually set it down first and take a look at it. And now we'll get the landing gear and actually put it there. So those screws that are here right now will get uh, removed so that the landing gear screws can go up through there and actually hold it on. But this is a way so that way you can check to make sure that your, your uh, frame is nice and 90 and uh, everything's lined up true so we'll get started in just a moment all right we're getting our frame framed up and we're going to put in our uh, posts for our canopy here so go ahead and have some frame space here so go here you'll dab a loctite Actually, here we go. That's what this little guy's for. That's included with the kit. And uh, just use the small owl wrench. Get that screw going there. And just put a small amount of Loctite. Okay, do the other side. want to do is maybe put a little dab of Loctite in the recess there. And do the other side at the same time here. Put a little dab in there. Okay. Okay. And so that's that. Okay, and once that's done, we can actually uh, put the main shaft on here, take a look at it. I'm gonna put take one of those shims out. We'll go ahead and take a look at that, how it looks. Pull this out, pull that up, push that back down. And uh, there we go, getting, getting close there. All right. On the back here, this post, this screw goes in, in here. Okay, this grub screw. You want to just put just a little bit of Loctite on this one. Reason being is we may have to take this off where the posts go. This is where the, the post, 
the post hit. So we want to be able to take that off if necessary. So we get that. And then let's do the other side here. And that's one of the reasons why I suggested uh, popping the uh, servo in so ahead of time so that way you can get to it, make it a little easier to get into. Alright, so that's that there. Alright, now there again, you want to put these on, just a small amount of Loctite. So there's your frame. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the landing gear on here. So let's go ahead and get this bag. This is a 500 HG2 and HG2A. So get that exact out of here and slice that open. Skids, struts, our bolts. So skids. Get these out here. All right, so let's get our skids and struts going here. So go ahead and push this through. Push this through. Let's get this over here. And you'll notice that the skids are actually marked left and right, and I just reversed it. So make sure you take a look at that when you're building. So the line logo faces outward. You can do that. Put that there. Slide this on. And uh, if you don't already have your Loctite close by, or I should say, excuse me, like Zap type of adhesive, uh, now would be a good time to get it due to the fact that we're going to be putting these end caps in, and that way we don't lose them. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. These are the skid stops. Okay. And here's the little pieces that you want to CA there. So let me get some CA. Alright, put that there. I'm just get a small drop or so. Let's put that there. And we'll put this on here. And you can just get your finger. Take the excess off. Okay, or a small rag or something like that. If you have any uh, allergies to CA or anything like that, the other alternative is uh, epoxy type glue, so you can use epoxy for this as well. Alright, just press that on there. And again, this is why you want to have a towel or something down on your table when you're CAing or using epoxy or any other types of adhesives. Uh, you want to protect your tables and things like that. Uh, your wife will appreciate that. Or your girlfriends or whatever. But uh, yeah, that'll make everyone happy there and make your table... Uh, a little less uh, susceptible to getting damaged as a result of utilizing uh, glues and things like that. Okay, let's get that in there. Hmm. Alright, it's a little snug, you can just push a little harder on it. That's it for the glue right there. Okay, now our struts. And prior to getting the helicopter, so I'm not right next to it, I'll go ahead and insert these. I'm not going to tighten them down. I'm just going to get them started so that way when I'm close to the frame, um, 
Again, guys, if you have big hands, makes it easier on you and your knuckles when you get close to the side of the frame. So we'll just do that. And due to the fact that we don't know the location on the frame just yet, again, we're just getting them started. But I like to get them started before I'm right on the helicopter. It just makes it easier. Alright, so we have our skids and we have our frame here. So let's get the frame ready. Actually, again, I was like prepping the washers ahead of time. These are for the skids here. We'll go ahead and uh, get these ready to go. And then we'll get started here. Alright, so let me uh, put this aside and then I'll show you the next step. Again, this is why the set screws or the grub screws on the actual skids are not uh, tightened all the way down. That way you can just slide it to the position you need it to be in and then uh, tighten down your screws. Then we'll actually uh, tighten down the grub screws on the skids and make the final adjustment here for that. Alright, so you can see you got the basic frame all laid out, you're ready to go with the skids on it, and then you have those grub screws we talked about, and the skid stops, you can pop those on right here like this, just slide those on. And uh, here's where you want to tighten. See how it's very close right here, Sam? You can still do it easily, but I just like doing it this way. That way, they're already started, and uh, it's easier to align the uh, grub screw in the hole on the skid. Flip that around. Same thing. Screw. Just snug, don't overdo it. That uh, tighten down as soon as you start feeling resistance, you're pretty close. And then uh, periodically check that, you know, every uh, you know, 
10 flights or so, but it shouldn't loosen up at all, uh, really, but just after the initial setup break-in, you know, make sure you just tighten those down, make sure they're, they're snug. And, uh, okay, there's our, there's our frame. The, the next part of this process, we will actually start inserting the servos. So let me get the servos here. I, we're going to be utilizing the 510s. And this will be for the aileron and pitch control. And we'll also get the grommets and the servo horns for these servos as well. Okay, so put those there. And you know what? Go ahead and pop off the watch here. All right, let's uh, get the grommets. Lock washer, screw, control arm. All right. On the uh, once for the aileron and elevator, you're going to want to use the outer hole and the long ball here. So let me go ahead and put a little Loctite on here. And as far as the ball, actually, it's on the inside of the horn. So this ball on the actual control horn, outer, outer hole, long ball on the inside. So line's facing out, ball's facing in. Let's get another one. Go ahead and do both sides. Have that out. Again, these screws we don't need. Put those there. And uh, let's insert these real quick. Get rid of all the clutter on the bench. Okay. these. Again, you can push them in relatively easily. If not, you can use a screw to guide it to press it in. Uh, that's up to you if you want to do that. And uh, when you're tightening these down, again, these also act as a uh, gauge, so that way you can feel the resistance of the brass when you're tightening down inside of the uh, frame. And you know that you don't need to tighten anything beyond that due to the fact that once it's getting slightly, you know, it feels crushed or getting tense as far as the, when you're screwing the screw in there, you, you know that you've uh, tightened down far enough and uh, that's, that's all you're going to need. Let's see. Okay. Just a little bit there. Again, outer hole, long hole. This is for aileron and elevator. No, excuse me, aileron and pitch. Okay, so we 
have that. We're going to need our screw though, so let's get that screw pack. Should be over here. Good. Pop all these horns out. And uh, keep that handy. Alright, on your servos, the orientation on the frame, they're going to face vertically, so they'll be like this. So we'll go ahead and drop these in here. Alright, there's one. There's two. Okay. That's how those go. So we'll prep the, we have the horns prepped, and now I'll get the uh, screws, the self-tapping screws, and we'll get the washers for that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get these started here. I always get everybody lined up first prior to uh, torquing all the way down on them there. Okay, as far as the horn, right now we're just, again, pushing this on, getting it on the helicopter, get the Phillips on here. We want to 90 these all out once we uh, have our radio system in place. Okay. Servos almost done here. Okay, find the spline and gently uh, tighten down on the horn. Okay, just to get it started. All right. So that's that there, that our wiring here. Pull that down through. Figure this out here, how this is going to go. Whether we're going inside or out. We'll take a look at that. Okay, so now we have the, the, the frames where we're at with the servos in place. We have all that taken care of. Now we need to look at the tail box. All right, so we'll look at that. 
and uh, also the uh, basically the boom support area. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. So this is a, a piece that you'll need. Okay, but before uh, you actually put this piece on, you want to make sure that you get your uh, rudder servo in place. So before I jump to the 500 HT11, I'm going to install the rudder servo, and that way uh, I have a clear shot at uh, you know installing the servo without any uh, thing in the way. I can clearly view the servo. So let's go ahead and do that really quick, get that taken care of, and then we can uh, move on to the tail. This is the DS520 servo here I'm using. It's included with the kit. So uh, if you're just uh, getting into helicopters and uh, this is your first build, um, you can see it's very straightforward. If you just follow the manual along um, from start to finish, it'll get you through these processes here. The only thing that uh, we've done differently was to install the elevator servo, but aside from that, everything else is per spec to the plan. Alright, let me get the horn. And uh, I'm looking for the self-tapping screw, which is right here. Alright, so we have our self-tapping screw. And what we're going to want to do is we want to get this in the frame in the back here. So let's do that. Let's turn this this way here. And uh, depending on how you're setting up your tail there, you can uh, you could go to either side. Uh, what the manual calls out for is the left hand side of the frame and the uh, servo it's as far as its direction faces aft. So this part, faces the tail. So it's like this, but we're going to mount it like this. So just so you know, so this will go in here. We'll mount that All right, like so. Let's get you in there. Alright. And let's get four more of those self-tapping screws. Like that. And we'll need a ball and a small nut for the horn. So we'll go ahead and get this going here. As far as the location on the actual horn for the uh, tail servo, you're going to want to be on the outer hole. So we'll put that on the outer hole. Put a plan here. Again, you're going to want to use a small dab of Loctite. Uh, 
tight should run out, you can simply pop it open there and be able to get just a little bit there. And this is where it's good if you have a pair of needle nose pliers. Just get a pair of needle nose here. Let's tighten that up. Alright. Again, of course, we want all our stuff to be 90, so we'll go ahead and install that. Get that lined up on the spline. Push that on there, like so. And uh, that's how that servos. Um, as far as the, uh, again, the horn location, everything is still needs to be 90 and centered up. We're just getting this uh, installed so that way uh, we have all our horns in place, balls, linkages, and, you know, when we set everything up, we have it all in place. So we can do it mechanically, set it up, make sure everything's 90, and then from there, once we uh, power up the radio system, get everything zeroed out. And then, then readjust, make sure everything's 90, so we're mechanically uh, set up. All right, so let's get on that uh, tail box. That's going to go in here now that we have the servo in place and take a look at the, this tail. Okay. Again, that's the 500HT11. Again, a line pre-assembles this. Uh, there's no grub screws or anything on the shafts here, so we can take a look inside. I'll crack it open here, so you can see. But there's really nothing for you to do inside here. All right, everything's been done for you. Uh, very smooth, friction-free movement here on these gears. So it's pre-assembled, makes the building process a lot easier for you. Um, so, and this uh, happens to be 36T, okay, so that's the, on the uh, tail, alright, so let's go ahead and pop this in here, line this up, alright, and uh, that's it for tailbox. Okay, we got a bag of screws here. Go ahead and take a look at this. Alright. I will sort them out. Alright. Those are all the same. Okay. Here's your uh, boom here. There's a receiver for the uh, nut. So go ahead and do this. We don't want to tighten them down right now. We just want to Get them started just slightly, and uh, if you want, you can actually press those in. Just push them in with your hand. So go like that. Push it in again. Start it on this side just slightly. Okay, and that's that. Then we'll put this inside the frame here. Move your servo horn down out of the way. Slide this in. Okay. This thing may pop, which is not a big deal. Just make sure you don't uh, hurt your uh, servo there. And there are uh, tabs within the frame. Um, there's carbon holes cut out. And basically, uh, it should say in the carbon, there's holes cut out. So that way, when you put the actual uh, boom support mount here, it just clicks into place, locks in, you're 90 would up, you don't have to worry about bolts or anything before you even get started putting in bolts. Put this back in here, it just pops out, pop that back in, put this right there, okay, and uh, let's lock tight these guys here. Okay. 
if you built other helicopters before and you haven't built an Align helicopter, uh, I think you'd be uh, pleasantly surprised by the amount of uh, detail that's gone into the assembly process and the uh, sub-assemblies that are provided to you that pre-built. Uh, it helps you to you know visualize what it is that you need to put together and uh, speeds the process. And, you know, just looking at a diagram with a bunch of parts, you actually have a built subcomponent that you can uh, reference, and then as you deconstruct, you know, for greasing of bearings or you know making sure that you have Loctite on the balls, you're ensured that you have assembled your helicopter to your specification and uh, you know everything's Loctite the way you'd want it for your helicopter so you don't have to second guess anything about uh, whether or not something's been Loctite or not so it's, it's a great thing uh, I've built a, a lot of other makes and brands and uh, I can tell you that Align is by far the uh, easiest to build uh, and most intuitive uh, as far as the interlocking components and so forth. So.